Hey guys, welcome to Woodrow's International School, Cambridge Assessment, International Education, IGCSE History, Depth Study, Germany, 1918-45. Our today's topic is, how did Hitler become Chancellor? July 1932, great stacked elections. The Nazis were the single largest party with 230 seats, but they did not have an overall majority. Hitler versus Hindenburg and Chancellor von Papen. In this poster, you can see Hitler on top of Hindenburg and von Papen. Now, there are two interpretations here. Does it show Hitler pressing down and controlling von Papen and Hindenburg? Or is it saying that without these two men holding Hitler up, he would be nowhere? We need to find it out. Now, to understand how Hitler became a chancellor, we need to understand election results of 1932 in Germany. Now in this picture you can see German Reichstag November 32. But we will also talk about in July 1932 what happened. In July 1932 the Nazis they got 230 seats. In this you can see the logos. The parties, the German political parties. The first, National Socialism, SPD, Social Democracy, KPD, Marxism, Leninism, which was also known as the Communist Party. The Christian Democracy, the Nationalism, Conservatism Party. These were the politi different political parties in Germany. Now let's see here the Reichstag elections of 1932. We have a graphic display here with the pie chart and the bar diagram, bar graph. Uh, in this first diagram you can see the Nazis, the brown shaded part here which is NSDAP, they got 230 seats, 37.3 seats in Reichstag. KPD got 89 seats, 40.3 percentage of votes. Same with the Socialist Democracy, the Socialist Democratic Party, 133 seats. In November 1932, the Nazis, they got 33.1 percentage, that is 196 seats in the Reichstag. It's a, it's a drop in the, the votes. Whereas the KPD, they got a little bit of increase with 116.9 percentage of votes. SPD also got a little bit of increase with 143 seats. It is also said that the Nazis, they lost 2 million votes in November 1932 election. Now let's look at this bar graph here, election results through this period. May 1928. Here you can see the Communist Party with a, a blue turquoise color. The green are the Social Democratic Party. Yellow, the Catholic Center Party. And the uh, purple color is for the Nazi Party, NSDAP, the National Socialist Party. Now in September 1930, you can see the Communist is... They got uh, 77 seats, the Social Democratic Party, they got 143, Catholic Center Party, 87, the Nazi Party, 107 seats. Now, May 1928 and September 1930, in 1929, we all know that economic depression hit the world and the Nazi took advantage of the economic crisis in Germany. Weimar Republic was not able to sustain the 
crisis they were not able to solve the unemployment problems and the Nazis took an handsome advantage of economic depression. Now let's go move on to, to July 1932 results. You can see the hike the Nazis have. They were the single largest party in Germany with 230 seats in the Reichstag. In November 1932 you can see they were 196. Considerably they still stayed the single largest party in the Reichstag. Now look at the Social Democratic Party with only 121 seats in the Reichstag. Catholic Party 90 and the Communist 100. Moving to our main focus today, timeline of the actions leading up to the famous events. First, July 1932, von Papen appointed as the Chancellor. July 1932, the Nazis were the largest singer party with 230 seats, but they did not have an overall majority. Hitler, he demanded for the post of Chancellor, but Hindenburg was suspicious of Hitler and he refused to give him that position. He chose Franz von Papen to become a Chancellor. He thought that von Papen could solve the unemployment problems, but soon he was proved wrong because Franz von Papen did not have support from the Reichstag. November 1932, the Nazi lost 2 million votes. Nazis, they came out to be a single largest party. Although the votes fell, Hitler regarded this election as a disaster. He lost more than 2 million votes along with 38 seats in the Reichstag. The signs were that Hitler's tide had finally turned. The Nazis, they started running out of funds and it was also said that Hitler threatened to commit suicide. But that year was Hitler's year. So let's wait and see what happens in December 1932. Hindenburg again refused to appoint Hitler as Chancellor. In December 1932, Hindenburg chose Kurt von Schleicher, one of his own advisor and a bitter rival of von Papen. But within a month, Schleicher too was forced to resign. Now by this time, it was clear that the Weimar system of government was not running efficiently. The system of balances and proportional representation meant that no political group was able to provide a strong rule. Now this had left the 84-year-old president Hindenburg to more or less run the country using his emergency power. Now students, you need to go back and check what was Article 48 about. What would a president do if he will use Article 48? He would use his emergency powers without consulting the rate stack. Uh -huh. And that's what happened here. In Jan January 1933, Hindenburg appointed Hitler as a chancellor. Through January 1933, Hindenburg and von Papen met secretly with the industrialists, army leaders, and politicians. On 30th January, to everyone's surprise, they offered Hitler the position of chancellor. They were confident that they could limit Hitler's influence 
and resist his extremist demand. But time will show us if they were correct in their thinking or Hitler was too smart for them. The idea was that the policies would be made by the cabinet which was filled with the conservatives along with von Papen. Hitler would be there to get the support in the Reichstag for those policies and to control the communists. Now in this slide, I'm going to show you some of the important person for this historical event. Now first, von Papen. He became chancellor in July 1932, but he did not have any support in the Reichstag. President Hindenburg. He refused to appoint Hitler as a chancellor. In December 1932, he chose Kurt von Schleicher, but unfortunately, he was also forced to resign. You can see here, von Schleicher. The man here with a strange mustache. On 30th Jan 1933, to everyone's surprise, Papen and Hindenburg offered Hitler the post of Chancellor and Franz Papen as Vice Chancellor. They were confident that they would limit Hitler's influence and resist his extremist demand. Now these were the four important personalities who were who are mentioned in your textbook. Now in this slide, we are going to see source evidences of Hitler becoming a chancellor. Of these two news articles can be primary source because they were published the same year. You can see here Hitler named Chancellor, Berlin, Jan 30. Adolf Hitler, leader of the fascists today, was made Chancellor of Germany to succeed General Skurt Glacier, who resigned last week. The second news article also says the same thing. Hitler made Chancellor by German President, choice announced today. These sources are newspaper articles which were published in 1930s emphasizing on Hitler being appointed as a Chancellor of Germany. These sources also serve uh, evidences for our learning. My dear students, let's read this source from IGCSE textbook. Our opponents accuse us, National Socialists and me in particular, of being intolerant and quarrelsome. They say that we don't want to work with the other parties. They say that the National Socialists are not Germans at all because they refuse to work with another political parties. So is it typically German to have 30 political parties? I have to admit one thing. These gentlemen are quite right. We are intolerant. I have given myself this one goal to sweep these 30 political parties out of Germany. Hitler speaking at an election rally, July 1932. Now with this source, we have a clear idea or an intention what is going to happen when Hitler will become a chancellor. Are these political parties safe when Hitler will take his position? Or is he going to do what is written in the source? Now this we have to wait until the next lesson. Thank you my dear students for watching this presentation. I hope you liked it and I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Thank you.